Hey everybody, welcome to episode 3 of The Road, my chilled out, laid back Minecraft survival series where we plan to dominate the world. In the last episode, we completed the iron farm slash villager breeder and it's running well with plenty of iron to trade for emeralds and gear. In today's episode, I had two goals. Number one, we will be building the ironworks, a large building to house the iron farm, and number two, build the Motel 6, our villager trading hall. We want to make sure their stay is as pleasant as possible. We'll even leave the light on for them. So for the ironworks, we need lots and lots of bricks, also granite and polished granite, and some stone variants. I have to be careful with combustible blocks because of the lava in the farm. And that means clay balls, a ton of them. So off I went in search of patches of clay. After a short time gathering these resources, I decided it would be much faster to trade for them. After all, I already have the villagers to put in place. Free market capitalism, baby, let's go. The idea is to trade with masons. They will sell me bricks and some other goodies. Maybe three masons altogether. I got a bit sidetracked and started a lava farm next to the villager chamber. I started with furnaces and thought it would make more sense to go with blast furnaces, and in the end I regretted this decision, at least for now, because I wasn't really smelting ores and totally forgot that I can't smelt food or stone in these things. But I'll come back to that later. I planned on building the trading hall right next door here, but before I got going with that build I needed to do a little terraforming. I started laying the hall out with some temporary dirt blocks that I'll remove eventually. Of course the cow farm was entirely too close and needed to be moved a bit. These guys are always so easy to work with, right? They need a permanent home a little further away, maybe across the river over there. I laid out the hall based on the farm designed by ENXO4's method of villager trading. I love that guy. I wish I had the technical ability that he does. The plan is to be able to add a second floor to this building later on if needed. Getting ready to move in some villagers, these masons were going to need some stone cutters. And duh, I made grindstones, I'm not sure what I was thinking. And we needed redstone dust and iron to make a transportation system for our special guests. I placed some temporary dirt blocks to keep the villagers safe and to make it easier to get them where they needed to be. Hopefully encourage their tracking to the workstations. Okay, so it was villager time. And there goes number one. And then number two. And number three. These guys are gonna love it here. This guy was really giving me a hard time and I had to make a formal report to HR about his lack of teamwork. Claustrophobia? Come on, man. I continued moving in villagers until we had our Fletchers and Masons in place with the plan of trading with these Fletchers for our first emeralds. I tended to the herd. I was going to need plenty of leather for trading books and the enchantment team. I got my first librarians in place, harvested some trees for sticks, and bam, my first emeralds in this world. I cleared out a ton of trees to get even more. It was time for my first enchanted books. I forgot the trap door before I nudged this guy in here, and this is how you fix that if you ever have the same problem. A little water goes a long way. Rolling our first enchants, I locked in protection four and then fortune three. I was well on my way to complete domination and ruling this world. I started trading masons for bricks to be used in the ironworks. I created some more rooms, if you will, for librarians, got my first toolsmith in place, and got him going with some iron trades. I got more villagers in the farm, and with Silk Touch locked in, combined with Fortune 3, we could really get some mining done. And I'd been having the idea of flattening this island. These things would really come in handy. Boom! Mending! Let's go! In this mod pack I'm using, there are some enchantments that I'm not familiar with. This one turns trees you chop into charcoal. Cool, but no. I'll use a grindstone on it. I placed an anvil to finish out the enchanting area and made my first infinity bow. I'm coming for you, end dragon, and soon. Weaponsmiths were next on the agenda and tools, leveling them up to take iron trades. You guys got stores down there I don't know about? 
I collected more dirt to close these villagers off from the outside world while we take on the first big projects of the series. I took a pause to enchant my first good pickaxes and rename them my standard names. Silky Smooth and Fortunate Son. I needed to tend to the sugarcane situation, so I leveled out some ground for a simple sugarcane farm that would run in the background. I have bigger plans for this in the near future. As you can see, I put the torches in the wrong spot initially, so don't make that mistake. It'll prevent the sugar from growing three high to be seen by the observer. I collected some sand for glass and installed the minecart hopper collection system. The small sugarcane farm was finished. It wasn't much, but at least it would be producing for me in the background. I filled in some more villager slots, did some more trading, and made some more money. More brick buying for the ironworks, and laid out the dimensions for the foundation of the build. I'd been wanting to flatten out the island, and decided now was the time and was going to need a better shovel. How many shovels do you think I'll go through during this? Let me know in the comments. This guy had efficiency one on his shovels, so I took him up on his offer. I could start with this lowly enchanted shovel and decent pickaxes, but really wanted better enchantments on the dig dug. Boom, I got efficiency four, and man was it expensive. I would have to do some more buying and selling to be able to afford that. Some of you are rolling in the emeralds with raid farms and things like that, but not me just yet. And just like that, I had an unbreaking two efficiency four shovel. So let's get busy. With the island flattened, I started gathering and storing the materials I'd need for the ironworks build, trading for emeralds to buy more bricks. I had plenty of granite stored from the island project, but would need andesite, and that would require a mining trip, and spruce. I really wanted some scaffolding so I wouldn't have to use dirt to get high up on this build, but I had no bamboo and a sparse amount of string. I had a few wandering traders stop by, but so far the only thing worth buying was a mangrove propagule. And of course, some leather and leads, you know. So... I built a string farm. Now, I have never done any duping in Minecraft outside of TNT. And honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Feels a little cheaty, I'm not gonna lie. But this thing was insane. I definitely had the string for scaffolding now, and remember that I could trade this string for emeralds to fishermen. So, I rerouted the mine track and ushered in some fishermen to trade with. This thing was OP for sure. I'll tell you what, next episode I will blow this thing up with TNT. I really don't want to get into item duping. I could see sand for huge projects or TNT, but that's about it. I did check chunk base and found that there was a very small patch of bamboo jungle south of our position that wasn't extremely far away, so off I went. I ran into a little village very near the jungle and stopped by to see what they had to offer. Not much, but I did get a carrot and a potato from them. With the bamboo in sight, I collected two or three stacks and it was time to head back to camp. Back at the base, I planted down a few of the bamboo, the potatoes, and the carrots. Before long, we'll be able to trade these with farmers for even more animals. Finally, it was time to start on the ironworks. Hello, future Devil Dog here. I lost my actual footage of almost all of this build. I had some hotkeys set up for OBS and accidentally switched scenes without knowing it. I've since gotten rid of all the hotkeys until I solved that problem, but here we go, enjoy the time lapse.
The ironworks was done finally and the iron farm was back to running normally with no spawnable spots for the golems. So my next big project for this episode was the trading hall and I had a specific idea for the exterior. I was going for that look of a hotel slash motel from the 60s or 70s, like an old motor inn you used to see while you were on a road trip somewhere. We had the masons and with a little elbow grease. One more time, are you okay with that if I run the emerald machine for one more time? Okay, that's what I thought. I'll blow it up next time. A little boom boom with the TNT. Wow, I'm almost out of stream. Now, with the Emerald Farm running, we had unlimited access to quartz blocks from the Masons, and that was going to be my block of choice for this build. And they're cheap. I started out by just roughing in part of the building, deciding what I thought worked and what didn't. Diorite was a little too dirty, if that's the word I'm looking for, but white wool, I think, broke up the pattern quite nicely. And Lord knows with the string farm, we could make plenty of that. Once I got the gist of how this was going to come together, I was off. Overall, I'm super happy with these builds, probably my favorite of any I've done in Minecraft up to now. Next up for episode 4, the dragon baby. We'll also be cleaning up the area between the builds, organizing our storage, and building a proper sugar cane farm. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe, and be on the lookout for The Road, episode 4 soon. Thanks for stopping by the channel. I really appreciate all of your support, your comments, helping me to grow this channel. Until next time, Devil Log MC, over and out.